I think we're ready, live, or at least uh, virtually also projected somewhere. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, we have uh, great speakers today, uh, people that have great careers and um, doing great things for the moment and what kind of relates us or what kind of brings us here today at Art Brussels is a very specific project uh, in the south of France, in Arles. It's the Luma Foundation that has uh, been built as we speak. And um, it's in the landscape of cultural institution, a very innovative project on all levels. And we'll try today to talk about it, illustrate it with different angles. Um, and, but first of all, I'll, I'll introduce the speakers. Um, we have the pleasure to have Beatrice Roof, who was the former uh, director of the Stedelijk Museum, also head curator and director of the Kunsthalle in Zurich. Don't remember exactly the dates, but um, and has been working on the uh, project of the Luma Foundation since the beginning with a group of people, and she will explain and illustrate a little bit how that process and how that think tank has been functioning since a while now. Um, we also have the pleasure to have Bas Smets. He's Belgian. He is a landscape architect and much more. But as a resume, it's, it's a good term. Um, he is also involved in the, obviously, in the Luma project as um, creating the whole park around the different buildings that enhance this project. And he will explain us a little bit what um, his role, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a curatorial role of this whole integration in the, in the landscape of Arles. And last but not least, Jan, Jan Bullen, uh, director of Z33, also director of the, uh, the Design Biennale in Istanbul, and uh, you also teach at the Academy of Eindhoven. Um, so I'm going to start with three quick introductions on your, more on your work, not yet on Luma. And um, I'll start with Beatrice. You have been initiated uh, a, a very specific program. You collaborated with, uh, with Oma on it. It's called Base turns and now, a research-based activation program that is sort of another way of looking at collections, looking at how the dynamic of an institution could be revitalized or dynamized. Could you, like, in very short, talk a little bit about that? We'll illustrate you. Well, good afternoon. Um, yeah, maybe I take that also as a step into talking about Luma. Um, um, but uh, I start with uh, with the uh, Stedelijk Museum in, in this case because BASE is one of the, um, um, so to say, orientation lines and program lines uh, developed in the last three years there. Uh, and BASE, particularly BASE, work, uh, we ask uh, Rem Kolhas and Oma to work with, uh, with us on a new... Um, architectural landscape, so to say, to, to present the so-called permanent collection display. Turns, and now are the other program lines, uh, turns and base are really inherently connected because uh, it implies a set of, yeah, you could say, a set of rules how to work with a collection which has uh, uh, grown since, or I mean, exists uh, since uh, the, the, the late 19th century. Um, at the at, uh, at, uh, time, uh, the city of Amsterdam decided to have everything which was before the, uh, the turn of the century, so to say, in the Amsterdam Museum and, and everything that is so to, from modernism to now in the State League Museum. The actual foundation of the State League Museum is a donation of a group of private private collectors called uh, the Society with the Long Name, <laughs> cannot say it differently, uh, but uh, the collection uh, exists of uh, as well a design collection and an art collection. And um, 
I had um, I, I was very when I when I came to the state league I thought it's a, it's an incredible chance not only to uh, to to uh, to look at how to work with collections in general but also to look how uh, this is one collection and not two separate fields to be looked at but uh, to uh, to uh, strategies uh, really to look at cultural production and aesthetical production in general and how this weaves in and out of one another and uh, base really was a, an attempt to not only look at the different use of the building because as you know the state league uh, the old state league building has been extended and reopened 2012 with an extension uh, and uh, th there's a totally different type of spaces. The old building is the classical museum type of building with the linearity, like one room after the other, uh, fantastic rooms to, uh, with different sizes. So the, the, the whole range of how, to, how you can work with spaces and how, how um, the, the classical canon of telling arts, art history stories had been you know, perfectly um, uh, implanted in a building like that, and the new building working with giant spaces, without columns, without uh, separation. And uh, that's, of course, a nice idea, uh, but also an idea that complicates production of shows, in a way. But it's also the, the, the idea of like constantly activating the thing yes. and dialoguing between, and I think that's also something that Luma has a really sort of yeah. volonté or sort if, of... If you give me the like two... I mean, I'm sorry, I don't want yeah. to bore you with things, <laughs> but, but the essential thing was that to bring the collections together and to look into different ways of, um, of experience. That, of course, the, 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 the contemporary experience continuously changes and also this changes our way of how we should possibly as institutions uh, work with the institutional field. And BASE is one of that, which means that uh, you have a dehierarchized view on, uh, on objects. Uh, and you have an integrated view and you have a view of p permanent research and experiment with it. And that's, that's, the word, that's the word of research and I think it's something yeah. that you all three are passionate yeah. about. And and yeah. even now, a yeah. uh, link to, to the, the Luma Isle. Um, uh, I think what uh, you mentioned, the core group before, uh, I was very lucky to, to get involved in the project very early on. <laughs> I mean, by, by chance, when I was in LA working on the show, Maya Hoffman was there to the, for the first meeting with Frank Gehry. Mm -hmm. to look into how to transform the, uh, the uh, Parc des Ateliers, the former SNCF uh, reparation site, into a uh, project which uh, she, she did not define as something yet in terms of an institution, not an art institution, not a cultural institution itself, but she was interested in looking in, into other qualities of how to produce, experiment, research, and also connect the, the cultural fields to a, a, a broader societal field. And uh, this is a gigantic site, uh, half of it ruins, half of it uh, partially, like the Grand Halle was partially, uh, was already renovated, um, but uh, not so far that you can actually use it for art exhibitions in a classical sense. And uh, let's say from 2005 to 2010, the idea really uh, grew, as well on, on terms of uh, uh, Maya Hoffman working with Gary on, on, on plans and, and ideas, and also on ideas how a, a uh, like a, a um, artistic field could be de developed there, and uh, 2010, then the so-called core group really was fully formed, and um, and that of course we talk about institutions and the uh, experimentation or the con continuous quest of also not only challenging but also um, bringing the the question of institutional work to a relationship to the contemporary as well aesthetically, artistically, but also so, so societally. Uh, the group I find is uh, since then perfect and, and, and a very interesting and, and challenging system also to work in. It consists of um, 
of Tom Eccles, who is the director of CCS Bard College and the director of the Hessel Museum there, uh, Philippe Parino, an artist you I'm sure all know very well, Liam Gillig, also an artist um, you know very well, I'm sure, and Hans Ulrich Obrist. I think you, one ha does not even have to explain anything, uh, and and uh, myself, and of course Maya Hoffman as the as the as the head of this uh, core group, and um, since the since 2000. 2010, uh, the core group has been really working on pre-configuration models. So every project that was uh, that we got in, uh, engaged in, besides thinking about the whole site as an institutional setup, was really to think about ways of producing, uh, ways of, of uh, researching, also ways of installing, also um, pilots, so to say, that uh, that the point into the future activity activities of or possible future activities of the of the of this institution. And from the beginning, it was very clear that Maya Hoffman not had an interest in like presenting her collection or doing an art institution in a classical sense. You all know that in Arles, there's also the Rencontre Arles, one of the of the, the oldest um, festival for photography. So there was a there was a there was a strong um, activity placed in summer. Uh, always we, 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 I remember that we spent a long time talking about what seasonality in in that region is how to how to also make an institution in that context work the whole year um, uh, around and and what it means to be there in spring summer autumn and winter um, it, it was a question of how how to bring people there and to to not to, to engage them in a context which goes beyond um, uh, the, uh, the an, an actual event uh, driven activity so the residency program is a very very important thing and then the production on site it wasn't a, a coincidence that Maya chose Arla because no. she had no, not at all. she has not a done. long history with the city which yeah. i think also is that, important uh, yeah uh, what is really really important is that uh, um Al, Al is uh, is really the family center um, Maya Hoffmann's father moved there in the 50s and he founded uh, the Kamark Park, really. He, he was a co-founder of the Worldwide Fund, very much engaged in uh, environmental questions. He, he uh, founded the Tour de Bala, which is a bird watching, a highly scientifically word, uh, working bird watching uh, um, center. And, and, and of course, all the, the, the brother and the sister also live in Arles. They're very, very much engaged. And uh, the, the project Maya Hoffman envisioned and, and is still uh, developing uh, contains all those family traditions. And part of this family tradition is very, very strongly also to not only engage the, the, the place, but also the people of 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 the of Arles and the and the and the, um, yeah the region of Arles, and uh, we were all to this great uh, Christmas party end of last year, and you could uh, already see that uh, it really engages many 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 people from uh, from Arles and the surrounding of Arles, and it's basically not only uh, an implanted institutional idea but an engaged social um, interaction with the city the surrounding and the nature and, and environment of it. And it's a little bit a balance act also between the, the sort of architecture that's pretty present, the, the institution itself, how to integrate it in the local community and uh, giving a programmation that internationally is relevant, but that's also locally uh, engaging, I think, and, and that is it's, it's very interesting. Um, the, the, the question you ask is very interesting. You, know, you could, of course, think of, oh, yeah, there's something flying in, transferring and transforming a, uh, like a historical site into a contemporary center. Mm -hmm. But there is much more to that. You know, it's, it engages in, you think the, um, uh, the, the, this region has been very much in, in festivals, summer festivals, you know, the, the Rencontre d'Arles, uh, the, the, in Avignon, the theater festival, lots of uh, timely, um, um, concentrated events. Tourism, one of the, of the very important elements there. And to say 
there is a possibility that uh, there's other seasonalities possible there as well. And, and what does that mean to engage uh, beyond, um, beyond that uh, great times of the festival? What does it mean to, to, um, to think of, of, uh, of the region, of the environment, of the, uh, the, the actual uh, architectural implica Im implications, the, 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 the involvement in people uh, there all year around. You know, I remember when I first came to Al and then we went back uh, after the summer uh, in the winter and pretty almost everything was closed in the winter. You know, now that already totally changed and I'm sure you are aware that around Al uh, that uh, a lot of new, the, 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 um, the South is really engaging into sustainable all year round um, developments now, and I think that's extremely interesting. And I think uh, I'll plays an important role in that. And yeah. the Luma Foundation. It's that whole program that is during the whole year and wonderful exhibitions, wonderful initiatives uh, and parties, and uh, so it's it's a it's a it's a great dynamic. I have I experienced it um, in the last couple of yeah, years. You know, of, yeah. Um, but you wanted to know, and I have not said that yet, yeah. how the core group really works together yes. with Freya Hoffmann. Is, and, and I think that is a very, very particular way of, uh, of really believing in uh, collaborative work. And, uh, and actually really realizing it. So the projects that have uh, been the pre-configuration projects, so where uh, all truly collaborative programs. And uh, so they are conceived together, they are, they are curated together, and then uh, there's a principle of one or two from the group then take the lead in like realizing it, but it's all conceived together. And that's a but very- there's a clear vision that yeah. is also generated and represented by Maya, like you said, and even historically. Yeah. And that sort of, that's the sort of, uh, that brings everybody together. There is a there is a mission that is very clear, and that's why this sort of collaborative energy yeah. can can really be yeah. And and collaboration not only on site but also internationally and connecting uh, not only projects but also people together mm -hmm. is one of the core uh, core questions there. That uh, that also involves experimentation. It involves research. It involves uh, looking into how. Um, yeah, the, the the archives of our cultural produ production can be um, a function like a function in that space. So, for example, uh, there is a few ar archives that already uh, already already entered the collection, and they will be activated in different ways, uh, like the Derek Charman uh, Super 8 Film Archive or Annie Leibovitz, uh, but also the archive of uh, of exhibitions um, that were of the uh, Tempo del Postino, and there's other other archives to 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 be um, activated soon, and the same in really implies uh, also in, in in terms of a, a family or, or collaborative family building that comes through the pre uh, pre configuration projects like uh, like a, a big show that was done in the amphitheater of the of Al uh, where where um, Philippe Perino and uh, Liam Gillick proposed to have an exhibition which is is in continuous process. So there were sand artists coming to the, amphi uh, the, the amphitheater in, in, uh, in Arles, and they were co transforming a, a sand a landscape from um, an image of the, of the uh, of the moon towards yes. the the beach, and in that there was a continuous you know, for two weeks. It was brutally hot, and it was brutally in, uh, in interesting also because there was a um, a, a very uh, a very interesting relationship between production and representation, and so the artists came. They were working on site. They they produced their projects on site, and in an ever changing uh, image of of, so to say, an exhibition display, which was the sand uh, changing um, mm -hmm. in, as, as a landscape. And projects like that are incredibly complex and, and, and uh, yeah, um, um, difficult to produce. And I think that is one of the, 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 real, uh, the real intentions missions, yeah, and intentions. missions of this, of this institution to, uh, to not shy away from, from enabling actually production, research and innovation also on site.
Great, thank you. It's maybe a good way to go to Bas's implication in Luma. Uh, Bas has been working with Luma for over, I would say, ten, ten years? Eight years. Um, he has been uh, engaged to, to work on the park because you, there's, there's different buildings in the Luma Foundation. There's the, the Gary building, which is sort of the, the new building, the new symbol of the, the Luma Foundation. And then there is the restoration of different ateliers that are uh, ex-SNCF uh, 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 workspaces that have been restored to to enhance different activities, different sort of activities also from exhibitions to dance to architecture to photography, etc. So it's, it's one of the important things also, I think it's the openness of the program. It's like this dynamic that, that is very, uh, it's, not, it's not at all like one, one stream, it's, it's, it's very open towards different um, uh, yeah, activities and, and uh, skills. So, um, Bas, you have been working on the park, I call it the park, uh, the landscape around and that relates all these or, or link all these buildings. Um, I remember you told me that it was not always the good explanation bec uh, in Arles when, when they explained the project and then you explained it to me in a very thorough way and it was very inspiring. Um, it also relates to something that drives your uh, research, which is which I read as um, research, uh, I have my glasses, um, uh, augmented landscapes, which is sort of a little bit your, uh, your mark or your way of working. So the, the um, good afternoon. Um, what was very exceptional, I think, in Arle was that Maya um, asked me to, to, um, to design the, the landscape at the beginning of the project. I think I came one year after Frank Gehry in 2009. And in this um, spirit of collaboration, um, she wanted everybody on board from the beginning. And, and that was very interesting, because mostly as a landscape architect, we were asked when kind of the thing is done and, and they need some trees um, to plant. Um, and in, but he, here it was very different. And, and, and she was very clear about it, that she wanted to make a park, a public park for the people of Arles. So, so again, this, this kind of idea of not only um, art, but also really this idea that people could come um, and enjoy the, the, the park. And she also asked me to, to really think about what her father had done. As Beatrix said, he co-founded the WWF. He saved the Camargue. He was very implied in, in, uh, in the wet zone studies of the Mediterranean. Um, and so in, in the, 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 the first... Um, moments we really took the time to to understand how the the, the different landscapes around Arles influence uh, the its city and and we discovered I, I don't know if any of you know Arles but it's really an, an incredibly inspiring region not for nothing uh, Van Gogh went there or Gauguin went there you have the, 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 this beautiful light but also this very particular situation that there's three very different um, landscape morphologies right around the city of Arles. Um, it's very exceptional in the, in, in the world to have such a different, um, I would almost say bioregions so close one to another. Because from the, the, the upper part, which is the southern branch of the Alps, you're in a very mineral uh, landscape. While uh, going down, you go to the Camargue, which is the estuary plain of the Rhone, ending up in the Mediterranean. So you go, you go from a very wet landscape to a very, very dry landscape with different vegetation different types of animals that don't mix. And in the center seems to lie this Parc des Ateliers, which um, had become a 10 hectare um, desert, because it was a kind of concrete platform, no trees, uh, no vegetation at all. It had been ad abandoned since, uh, since the 80s, only to open for the Rencontre a couple of weeks uh, per year. Um, but when we started to study the, 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 the kind of characteristics, it was clear that it had the, 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 the climatic conditions of a desert. So how do you turn a desert into a lush park? That was, that was kind of the, the, the first uh, question. And then we thought, um, discussing uh, with Maya, but also with the core group of Philippe Arnaud, who, who was assigned to work on, on the landscape as well, was how, 
what kind of landscape do you make? We're not just going to make a 19th century, century public park. So what, what's a 21st century public park? And doing this research study into the Camargue, into the, 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 these different landscapes, we thought, can we not use the logics of nature that surround the site to re-vegetalize the site? Can we not learn from, from, from how nature itself would um, bring a, a landscape back on the site? So here you see these 10 hectares white uh, wedge almost uh, right next to the amphitheater uh, of the city and uh, so we, we, we worked with scientists, we worked with uh, botanists and we imagined if we would not do anything for the coming hundred years or thousand years or ten thousand years what what would happen naturally and can we not accelerate that natural process and so we, we um, we imagine this, because right now, of course, it's totally sterile. We don't have the right to, to dig um, because there's a, a, an ancient Roman necropolis lying underneath. So it's, we're actually making a landscape not connected to the earth. But then if you think on a larger scale, real landscape is not connected to earth either. It's only the top layer. So it, it becomes a kind of a metaphor of changing a desert condition into um, a, a, a self-supporting, a self-sufficient landscape. And in a sense, and this is a kind of a schematic um, a drawing, we imagined these mistral winds, these winds coming from the north um, to, 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 to create a kind of um, lower-lying area where we could have a lake, a lake that would be, um, actually would get its water from a canal that was built in the 16th century, and so we get free water on the side. And then we get this kind of um, topography sculpted by the wind, just like a dune landscape, and based on how much substrate you have, you have different types of plants. And so it becomes a very interesting um, section because when you walk through the site you walk through time because the more you have a substrate the more you have trees that would need more time to get there and from this this principle we we um, we, we designed as a this overall master plan so you see the, the Frank Gehry building you see the, the buildings that Annabel Zeldorf um, renovated and that is kind of independent landscape that follows a logic that's linked to wind to the sun and to the climate, and really tries to, to, to in a way, um, become this independent landscape. Independent because, as, as Beatrix said, it needs to survive in winter on its own, in a certain sense. It needs to um, be sufficient uh, for, for, uh, for itself. And it becomes, a, a, of course, a playground um, then to work with, uh, both uh, uh, from the city point of view, from, from, an, from a curator point of view. It becomes a kind of, of, of new background um, that, that flows in between uh, in between those buildings and so it will produce very different atmospheres this one this is the esplanade right next to, next to the, the the gary building in which we're in a very mineral world um which we, we we we're using trees that are able to grow in in a, in a, in, a, in shallow um conditions just like the trees that in the alpi uh, would grow um, we, we, we work with, with light and with, um, with, with shadow, here creating a kind of vegetal tunnel that leads you to the site. So kind of clair obscure, the, 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 so the actually working on the perception of, of, uh, of the site. And here you see the, this body of water um, that would also help to create a microclimate. Right now we're doing tests on really understanding the climatic conditions today and in two years time we will be able to see with how many degrees we drop the, the temperature, how the humidity ch uh, changes, how we bring back life to the site. And again, it's really kind of research study to, to, to also learn how this, what we learn could be um, used uh, elsewhere. And here again, you see this, this, uh, this kind of mounds that, that are added to the site um, by the wind, but also a bit by us. But really this idea of, of how can we create a cyclotron, how can we accelerate uh, natural processes into uh, this new uh, public park. And so this is the overall picture. We work in the site with the Luma Foundation, but we also work outside the site with the city and, uh, and other authorities to really try to have the biggest impact as possible. We're, we're, we're redoing right now the, the, the avenue that's leading to the, the site and working on a possible extension. Um, so, so really the, the site resonates throughout uh, the, the, the city. Great, thank you. That's um, and it has next to the to this. It it has really sort of this role of link. I think it's a, a link to the region itself, and this sort of it's not a recreation of what what uh, what's the environment, but it's sort of it feels that it's very in line with what's happening in the region, and it and and I and I really like the evolutive evolutive st 
thing, but it also has a very uh, important link, one, to the city and to the, ci to the citizens, because it's a park and it's an open space, and I think that, that idea of like giving this, this park a, that's nearly a way to the citizens of Arles and, and being enjoyable, and, and I think it, the, the relationship is very, very interesting, and I think that's why it's, it's one of the subjects that I think is um, discussed a lot with the different parts of the, the project itself. And in, in that sense, it was really also a kind of um, long process with the city. For example, we said the Aliscan, it is this great site right, lying right next to the, the site, which right now you have to go in, you have to go all the way to see the, 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 the 12th century church, Saint Honorat, that's very beautiful, you have to come back, back out. From the beginning, we said you need a bridge at the end so people can make a loop. And for years, they said no, but I think next year there will be a bridge. Or, or maybe the year after, but so so it also it, it's 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 uh, yeah it's a kind of it's evolving the project itself it's evolving but it's also all the people the process with the city itself and because as a landscape architect you work of course with city services you, you you work with people that needs to maintain it you need to help them understand how it can be a low cost ma maintenance and so it's it's the, it's it's interesting to see that the, while the project evolves the, the 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 people surrounding the project evolve with it. That the landscape is really that platform and that link with, with, with all these different aspects. We can maybe go to Jan and uh, talk a little bit about another project that was initiated by Maya and uh, the Luma Foundation. And um, it's it's a it's an ongoing project too. Yeah. Uh, it's an incubator. Jan, what what, what happened there? What what was your your idea and, and how did it grow? So, um, yeah, thank you, Dimitri. Um, maybe it's good to, to say that I'm quite uh, young at board of uh, the, the Luma Foundation, uh, only uh, for two years now. And it has the same characteristics that I uh, hear from, you can say, my colleagues, uh, the collaborative aspects and the link with the les landscape, the people, the region itself. and try to understand how that 21st century um, uh, institute can be built. So the question was uh, started with, um, and I think every time Maya invites somebody, it's like quite open. It's uh, uh, super open and to see if you understand the, the social fabric, the, the environmental fabric, the complexity also of the region, um, the seasonality of the season, which means not only like uh, that everything is closed in the winter and which is changing, but also it can, that is also an economical uh, big, uh, has a huge impact on that region itself. So politically, it's a very difficult region. Front National is very big. Um, so all kind of tensions are around. Uh, what we did is um, something at first sight like very with just doing research with students, going into the Camargue, uh, trying to understand the landscape, uh, trying to, to look and uh, to come up with uh, a kind of mapping. It was not more than that. Um, I was also not sure what, what she wanted to do with it. I also was not sure what the foundation could get out of it. Uh, but. The opportunity was great and uh, suddenly after six months um, of research with different kind of people, we came up with a, a proposal for uh, a circular economy. So you invited designers yeah, there? They we worked. invited uh, designers, uh, students, uh, and they came up with proposals for research. Mm -hmm. Research that, uh, that would be used uh, for uh, implementation in Parc des Ateliers, like uh, um, building uh, and constructing uh, with the landscape parts of uh, the interior, for instance. And this is what we are doing, uh, all, uh, also in uh, collaboration with uh, a lot of scientists that are out there and that are part of uh, the, the family legacy and heritage uh, Tour du Valais, which are the uh, 100 uh, scientists, that, uh, biologists, uh, uh, chemists that are working with uh, the Parc des Ateliers and with the region itself. Uh, I think they also work with you, Ambas. Um, 
So it's it's a uh, a place where art, design, social aspects, um, environment, uh, human rights uh, all come together. And uh, yeah, there suddenly at a certain time, um, Atelier Luma came out, an incubator, a place where we can bring all these aspects together. You see here. Uh, we are digging literally in the salin, uh, in the salt fields, and trying to understand what you can do with that material. It's one of the materials that is the most abundant uh, in the world and has a, a lot of history culturally and so on, but it's also one of the most um, neglected or negative uh, materials. It's seen as it's bad for health, it's bad for uh, metal and so on. But on the other side, if you rethink and rethink uh, society, but also economical systems, maybe it also can become a positive uh, material. And I think we found something. So um, that's what we are working on. This is the atelier itself. Uh, it's a place uh, approximately 2,000 square meters. She literally gave up exhibition space uh, just to say, okay, this is great, let's do it. Uh, of course, the site is uh, enormous, but it's also like blocked now. Eh? And this is for uh, the, the core group, also like uh, something, just they gave it also to us uh, so that we can play there um, and can work. It also will become hopefully a place where the artists in uh, residence also have a laboratory where they can make something, experiment and so on. So this is also in, in the spirit of uh, the whole foundation. Here we are, you see some of the first outputs that were also presented last week or this week at this right moment at the uh, uh, Salone de Mobile in Milano, uh, where we are working with algae. Uh, so we are making kind of biopolymers um, that are 100% uh, compostable. Uh, you also see like some with pink colors uh, that have to do with uh, the uh, the food that is out there, with uh, the, the, and that's also why the flamingos are pink, of course. So it's one of the examples of a designer that is that research on algae, developed a material. Exactly. From there, kind of thought about like how to yeah. make it a, an economy, nearly, or or yeah. at least a, a that production facility. That is where we facility. want to. That's where we want to go to. Uh, is and that they make the objects. Yeah. The, the problem with these kind of materials is that they, ca they are not uh, certified. Let's say that traditional uh, industries block it uh, because they don't have the, the right certifications. And by the support of the foundation, we are able to enter uh, commercial markets. Uh, so architects, designers and other people can start implementing these techniques. It's like an open source. <laughs> yeah, uh, open source. Of course, uh, we have to, to find ways how to share it. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are now the next steps. So one, after one year uh, research, we have the materials. And now we will start working on applications. That means like um, new kinds of uh, furniture. Uh, and the next step is uh, that some may become startups. And you told me also that the materials will be also, the, this research will also serve the, the building, the architecture, the interior architecture, eventually public space. even the public yeah. space. Yeah. So it's, it's like it, it does a, a nice little tour like between the, like it, it's going to be also demonstrated there as a usage. It will be demonstrated, the best showcase is the, the environment itself, but it is also try to answer the question of seasonality. Production, uh, local production in a, in a global world. Uh, materials are heavy and ideas are light. Maya loves that people can travel and can uh, go around and bring ideas to Arle, but also that Arle can bring things to the world. It's uh, and uh, again, it, it was also it's, it's it's why I got involved um, with Luma Arle because we we kind of tried to verbalize and and define a little bit what the Atelier Luma had and what was also very interesting in that sense is that it was a it's a subject that was very close to the people of Arle, so um, so it's like that that subject and then a sort of imposing building and a, a new architecture, uh, it it's it shows the spectrum of the activity. My 
question there is like what, and Beatrice, maybe you can answer, is like what do you think the, the biggest challenge is for the years or let's say the, the end of, of this, this period and, and the, the beginning of, uh, of the institution? I mean, uh, what, um, what f for me, and, and uh, I, I, I hope I can say that for the whole core group and for everyone involved, um, um, is the, the, the permanent um, allowance for things to be in formation, you know, not to say, okay, this is an exhibition space and, yeah. and Atelier Luma cannot use that because mm. it's an exhibition space, but uh, there's an openness to, to, to things to define what they are or can become and and i think that is a it's a very exceptional uh, attitude and uh, um, if i ever read in one of the the papers you had um, made public about this talk is uh, the the question of what is socially engaged and i i do think that the institutional model there is really that that the, 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 the there is a there is a political attitude in terms of that um, that there's a, a sincere belief in that the formation uh, and the continuous belief and the continuous um, um, sustaining also of um, experiment, uh, collaborativity uh, um, and, and uh, research leads to, to, to meaningful and, and sustainable um, activities in the end. So uh, yes, there is all this um, um, th 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 there is all these proposals given by architecture and the setup of the site itself and the landscape which is 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 uh, is formed, but there is not a closing down on this is it and this is what it has to stay forever. So the the openness towards a uh, like. Um, yeah, like a creative self-formation, which is permanently going on, is, is, is a very important. And that, of course, is a challenge once uh, the institution is an institution to maintain that and to, to keep that openness um, at the core. And of it's it. not always readable of at, the f at first sight. Yeah. So, so it needs time, a little yeah. bit like the garden or yeah. the park. It needs time and as much. Well, it's growing. That, and, and it's, it's growing. It's an, it's an actually, you, yeah. know, there's a, you know, there's all this uh, reconfiguration besides the, ex the, the traditional. And then, then again, we were trying to challenge the format of exhibitions continuously. But there is um, Atelier Luma, there is the Libraries on Fire, there is the uh, Off Print, there is uh, the continuous production of conferences and 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 uh, exchanges in terms of talks uh, so there's uh, there's uh, the LA dance project which will um, continue or maybe uh, transform to another uh, collaboration yet again so there's lots of pre-configuration and I think the 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 big um, um, uh, the big belief really is that um, that these dynamics and that continuous uh, openness towards um, producing, experimenting, and researching is is the the core of this institution. So there is a vision, there is a mission that's very clear. There is a a sort of um, let's say there are rules to to follow, or there's a there's a ballpark. But then what what's happening inside is very organic and open, and 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 works on 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 this whole like energy and collaborative field. Yeah, and, and as uh, Jan said and also you said that the the, the engagement and the um, um, the actual um, meaning for the site is a is a very essential mm -hmm. question there too. You know, it's like not a not that's not a UFO landed. Yeah. This is uh, this is the intentionally something that uh, wants to engage with the place, with the site, with the region and with uh, uh, with developing and, and maintaining a, a sustainable, uh, livable, societal, meaningful yeah. way. Yeah. Great. Did you want to interfere? Yeah. yeah, I was uh, trying to, um, um, or one thing that I forgot to say is um, everything what we do, there is only one criteria, is uh, we have to collaborate. Uh, so every project that we uh, instigate or that we want to start up, we need to, to have um, a group of partners, local partners, uh, and that can be a farmer, that can be uh, a laboratory, that can be 
an, uh, a company that can be an artist uh, and so on, but we need to have uh, a little network around the project. It's really building um, uh, and exchanging uh, knowledge. And that is like super, uh, it's formation, but it's really an exchange of information. It's uh, learning from Arle. Uh, learning from Arle and then also learn, there's also an educative part of what, what is the, the role of the, or how does Arle uh, and the foundation uh, positions themselves from an educative point of view, like and maybe even even the landscape or or how how that can influence sort of the the, the local people. Uh, in in the, the the construction itself of the garden, for example, we we, we, we of course we work with local firms. Um, we 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 do consult uh, all the local uh, specialists. And, and this, this, it's really this idea also working in close collaboration with the city to, to make a park that they can help maintain as well. So, so as we said before, the 21st century public park is not the same one as a 19th century one. It's not, it's not a kind of ideal image that you have to maintain perfectly as it is, but it's really a kind of evolving piece of landscape um, that changes through the seasons, but also through, throughout the years. And that by itself is, al is already an enormous learning for um, the, the, the public and the city services, that, that landscape becomes this kind of evolving thing and not this beautiful background that needs to uh, stay the same. And, and in, in, in this collaborative effort, what was truly key for the, the, the park was that since we were working on, on a concrete slab, where do you get your water? And, and, and during this, this kind of research um, of the site, we discovered there's a canal that is actually a bypass from the Durance to the Rhone, made in the 16th century, um, to irrigate the, the, the um, large parts uh, um, of the, the, the area north of, of Arles. And right in front of the site, by chance, the excess water flows before it's dumped into the Rhone. So it's, it's water that they don't use. So we tested the quali quality of it, it's a super quality. And so, so talking to the association that takes care of the canal. We, 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 we made a, um, an agreement that we could pump that water into our lake, use the lake as a reservoir, use the lake to irrigate the plants. And so in a kind of very simple way, the, the, the whole site gets irrigated with water between the Duhans and the, and the Rhone. So all the projects became nearly case st stories or case studies from the garden to the curatorial aspects, the dynamic, the openness, the hub. It's, uh, and that sort of, I think, is, is very relevant for an institution of the 21st century. It's like this openness. Maybe I can involve you guys, I think, because it is a big project. It's, uh, it's very rich. There's a lot of things happening in this project. Um, you might have certain questions where we have another 10 minutes to, uh, if not, that's the first time that somebody quickly has a prep, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, I would, uh, I have a question about, uh, so uh, Gary is the architect who is involved with the main building. Could you maybe say a little bit more why he is like the best choice to make, uh, yeah, to create the architectural environment? Why is it Gary, and not, not somebody else? What I know is that there, there's, it's a long relationship with Maya, Gary, but, and it's a project that has been in her head and in his head for the last, I would say, 15 years. Um, I know from I, when I was in LA, it was 2004 yeah. when they had they had already talks about the, the project. I think it's a it's a personal choice also of Maya Hoffman. To and and there's other there's other architects involved too. Annabel Selbov uh, renovated uh, the 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 SNCF buildings as well. So it's a it's it's a Again, a, col a collaborative idea of having this. No, yeah, no, this one no. signature building in collaboration with with uh, other approaches. If I if I understood in uh, well, uh, it was really a very uh, intimate dialogue between Maya and Frank Gehry for uh, a couple of years almost, uh, really working in the studio of Gehry to make it together. Uh, if Frank Gehry says it's his building, I think it's also Maya Hoffman's building. It's like there is a dialogue where these two worlds come together. 
but it, but it is very collaborative because it's not always like you have a, one process is doing an RFP and, and inviting certain architects to to propose and then you have another way is like you feel you have a relationship with somebody and you want to start the process of reflecting of like what this could be and I think it was this second scenario that grew since yeah more than 12 or it was also years. another world at that moment we need this I don't know if it needs um, it's very intrigued to see how a group of people working for more than 10 years about something but it's a very specific place that does um, a very specific research what about thinking about this as kind of um, developing um, let's say a toolbox or some kind of ideas for future area places yeah. I can answer on that uh, because it's uh, written in our plan of Atelier Luma the outcome should be a blueprint a blueprint uh, and maybe it's not we call it also the Atelier Luma formula uh, where how do you work in a region where there is uh, because most of the time we are working with waste materials so materials that are abundant in this region and our idea is and we start this year with that uh, to explore the Mediterranean uh, the Mediterranean as uh, because there also uh, Maya's father set up uh, the, the first international charter on nature reservation and protection and the uh, wetlands are very very vulnerable communities and they had the highest um, uh, regions or uh, lands for uh, biodiversity so they are very important uh, points and what we want to do with Atelier Luma is look if uh, this um, knowledge um, around for instance algae and other um, biopolymers uh, how that can uh, you cannot copy paste it because everywhere it's completely different but the way of working where nature and people interact with each other in a new way um, that is a kind of what we call the Atelier Luma uh, formula how that could unveil and the first results should be visible already next year uh, so but we are researching on it it's really her wish uh, to do that and it's also I think it's for me one of the motivations to do that yeah so it, it will reach out uh, the North Africa is uh, the orientation is not West Europe uh, for me it's like uh, North Africa and the Mediterranean yeah. and I also think and maybe Beatrice you can you can jump on this I think Luma the Luma Foundation now it's become a physical place but it has been active since much longer on a whole series of productions, events, uh, exhibitions uh, from the Tate to Serpentine to other in big institutions. So, so there, is an ex there was an expertise and there was an involvement for years and years and years and now it becomes a place, like a destination, that needs to sort of reflect that philosophy and reflect that approach. And then once that place exists, it might again go back to the rest of the world and, and, and how it's so... Well, it stays connected to the rest of the world. And I think, again, that is, uh, it, is, um, is, it is continuing the family tradition because uh, Jan mentioned the wetlands and the, the foundation of the father from, from the beginning also has been involved in other wetlands, you know, in, in research on how to maintain those, those uh, biospheres, so to say. Uh, so um, the, the, I think you can trust the best intention that this is an like a, a connected project it's not it takes the site very very seriously it's about being there but it is also about the connectivity and the exemplarity of it yeah may I ask you is it, uh, is it an idea to uh, introduce perhaps uh, sculptures in the or, uh, artists in the outside park that you are designing that you kind of have a, a way artists are involved into your landscape? We'll give a co-response uh, to this with Beatrix. We say the same thing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> no, the, 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 um, I, I see um, my, my commitment to really producing this landscape, producing a new type of climatic conditions, atmospheres, um, and I'm not making places too 
specifically to put sculptures. But since we're making an atmosphere, things are possible. And already people are looking at what can we do with the lake, what can we do with this kind of mountain, what can we do between the trees. But I'm, I'm specifically not designing it for, for, for uh, artists, but really to produce a climate. And uh, I, I can add up to that. So we're actually looking into real collaborations between landscape architecture and artists. You know, artists possibly also working with materials they, they ha have no experience or much experience with. So again, it's an exchange between competencies and, and, and uh, visions. Yeah. My second question is uh, the Jerry building. Is it a spe especially a exposition building what is the the purpose of the new building functionality no. of it yeah. do you mean what's inside so to say yes. yeah. why why it's, was it it's necessary again, it, to it make a new building it reflects really on the whole range of of um, of of projects there is exhibition uh, spaces in there's lots of uh, there's a library there's meeting places there uh, there's a restaurant uh, again um, being looked in into what kind of form of restaurant is that it will all be connected to the pre configuration projects and so it is not a building which is an exhibition space there's lots and lots of offices uh, of and, a, and, yeah. and a different type of of um, uses in that building we are very impressed anyway thank you and it's i would add that as you understood it's not a place it's not a demonstrative place it's really a place where where research and this collaborative it's, it's it's a big lab and that's very you feel it immediately when you go there it's like it's the activity and i think that's uh, that's very identifiable and, and great it will huh? that's the plan but it's, it's opening in in uh, how you say in phases you know like uh, this year there's uh, there's uh, the the luma days coming up in may there will be uh, um projects opening in may uh, to to the public then of course when the rencontre d'al during the time the rencontre d'al is opening there will be another set of exhibitions open uh, there's an ongoing um opening and, and, and extending process. So there's not a heart, this is where it begins and then it, it is a process too. The, the, um, we are building right now everything around the park, like all doing all the adjacent streets and after the rencontre, so in October this year, the, the, we will start the park and it'll take about um, a year and a year and a half. So 2020 the park should be open. But you can actually, the Luma Days will be about hospitality, which is a very important theme there. So you can check on all the programs on lumaarl.org. Lumaarl.org. Basically relating to back to the more institutional format that was the start of everything that comes from a, a need from transition that we all know. How is the feedback into the world where it actually started from, let's say, the Tate Modern, the, the MoMA, the Art Basel, the whole environment of Maya, of yourself, like how does it reflect back? And do you also feel that it has an impact on how that art world that we all want this transition so much to happen already takes things up? Is there, um, is there, is it taken seriously in that sense or is it just an incident, incidental thing that is her project or our project? I can say that, I, I admire the thing, but how does it already, how, it, do you feel already kind of a feedback into the more structural and kind of old fashioned, the old world, old art world? Yeah, old first of all, the, I think the institutions are reflecting continuously on what an institution is. And uh, particularly because Maya has been, you know, on boards of many of the, um, say, traditional institutions you just mentioned, um, I, I think her interest is really to, to, uh, to, to be involved or to enable, actually, uh, um, institutional, uh, an institutional setup which is um, possibly also developing models that can not easily be tested out in, uh, like in the in the MoMA or in the Tate. So it is a, again, it is a continuous process of formation, and and everyone, you know, the the artists in the core group, Philippe uh, Perino and Liam Gillig, are continuously um, uh, thinking about what the format of an exhibition is, and and have lots and lots of experience in working with uh, institutions. Hmm? 
They are challenging. Yeah, they're challenging also the institutional setup and, and, and how an artist works with institutional setups. And, uh, and as well, Hans Ulrich Obrist uh, uh, is continuously asking for the, the rule of the games, and, and Tom Eccles with the, the Bard College is continuously also rethinking um, institutional models. And I uh, had that interest also from the, from the beginning. So it is, uh, uh, I, I do think Maya Hoffman really wants, uh, uh, wants that continued. Uh, experiment and question, and and uh, uh, that doesn't mean that things uh, are away from forming and from being sustainable. It actually means that uh, the permanent, the continued experiment is sustainability too. And the foundation is a collaborator and a challenger at the same time, all the time, and that I think is is interesting for the other institutions. Thank you. I was intrigued by the Mistral. Mm -hmm. what, 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 how are you uh, implying uh, the Mistral to your park? Or how so the, the, the Mistral is this, this very cold wind yeah. following the, the Rhone, so coming straight from the glaciers of Switzerland yeah. to Arles. And on a, on a winter's day, it's, it's, it's very tough. It's, it's, it, it's this wind that people say would drive you mad. Um, so people would stay indoors and shut their, their, their windows. And, and it doesn't, but it's really interesting too. If you walk in the Camargo with the Mistral, it's, if you come back, it's yeah, you're, you're, if you don't go mad, at least you're a, whew, you were a bit somewhere else for a moment. And the, the, the way we implied it, um, first of all, in a protective manner, we looked at the Mistral, we did wind studies, and we, we placed trees to make sure that at the entrance of the Gary building you won't get blown away, but that the trees help create a kind of a, a, a moment where you can go inside. So at one point, we looked at it to block it. At the other point, we looked at it as a kind of possibility of bringing um, sediments to the site, which it's more, it's a hypothesis, of course, but so we use the Mistral and we, we shaped the topography as the Mistral would have done. And since it's always coming from the same direction, we can perfectly know with the wind study, with the buildings, what kind of topography would, be, would have been made over the years. So in that sense, it's both a kind of a, 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 um, an element that produces a landscape and both an element that we, we try to block at the, at the right moments. So you don't use it as an energy factor? No, we looked could into you, that, um, but since it's uh, so seasonal, um, it didn't make sense to put the uh, wind... Uh, we looked at, at putting the wind uh, turbines like this, uh, not the ones with the, the big ones, but the cylindric ones uh, along the railroad track. We looked at, at this with Transolar, climate engineers, mm -hmm. but they decided that it was, it was too seasonal to, to make sense. Yeah. No, it sounds very poetic. It sounds very beautiful. <laughs> but you can see that they even collaborate with the Mistral. So it's a, Indeed. It's a very collaborative Indeed. institution. Um, I'm gonna, we're, gonna, we're kind of up timing-wise. Uh, maybe we'll finish with one question for each of you. The same question. What would be your, and you don't have to extend it, but what would be uh, a sign of, let's say, um, success in the in five years from now, like well, the criteria of success? For me, if we succeed in developing that LUMA formula, uh, which I believe is really the kind of uh, wish of Maya to share that with a larger community, because the Mediterranean, for instance, the, the average age is um, 27, in, uh, 27 years old in uh, 2020. Here in this part of Europe, it's uh, 47 in 2020. So you see where the future uh, is. Um, so if we Just think in five years. Beatrice? I think I, I already said yeah. that, to, to, that, that this institutional setup is being actually sustainable in being um, staying open and, and, uh, and, uh, and moving, and I'm sure it will. And that uh, experiment also shows itself as high quality, um, not only collaborations, but also productions, and that that uh, connects to the world, really. Great, thanks. The place to yeah. the world. From, from the landscape point of view, um, <coughs> I, I really hope we, we, we can make this evolve, to, this part is in constant evolution, <coughs> that people understand that, that, that it's, it's really a living thing um, that people can interact with, but also animals. At some point we made this slide looking with the Tour du Valais at the migration of the birds, 
And in a kind of provocative way, but also in a kind of serious way, we said that we should measure the success of the park by the number of migrating birds that will actually land on the water. Wonderful. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Art Brussels.